Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. It's been half a year since I've stopped reviewing Big Oud. As I will not be testing any new Bigode wheels that come out, nor will I actually finish the test of the T4, because, well, these things just... they just fall apart, honestly. And before there is a safe charge port on those wheels, which is a not live charge port, and before there is a connection between the motherboard and the batteries, which will ensure that you can't physically ride a wheel, you will have tilt back if any of the batteries is damaged. So it's time to give Bigod a chance. And we'll be doing this with a wheel where Chance gave Bigod a chance. Or he gave them some chance. And by that I mean his name, Chance Heinz, which was talking with Bigode a lot, a fellow American writer, to make sure that this wheel will be good. And throughout this time when I was not reviewing Bigode, and pretty much as always, Bigode was trying to improve their wheels and make them better, and I hope this will be the case, because they certainly didn't improve in spelling my name. So we will be finding out what the Bigode Extreme is all about and where Bigode is heading in a series of videos. The unboxing, which is this one, a ride review, a teardown, and lastly the main review of this wheel. So let me tell you more about it. Broadway. First up, if you want to get a wheel like this, feel free to check out my e-wheel in Europe. Use my coupon code WRONGWAY for a 5% off. And of course, there's other affiliate links to dealers that sell those wheels and other wheels in North America. Using those links and coupon codes helps me to um, finance, finance all of this and give you guys the most independent and long-term reviews that I can do. I've been uh, working actually pretty tirelessly putting miles on all of my wheels, the V13, the S22, both of those wheels over 2000 kilometers, just to make sure that I give you a big picture, a clear picture of what those wheels are all about. And this feels actually quite special to me because this is the first time where Bigode, I was actually talking directly Bigode and they've decided to send me one sample for free. So I can just, do all of the testing I need with this wheel for a longer ex extended period of time and make sure that I give you guys the full picture of the Big Oat Extreme. So I have the batteries shipped separately because it was air freighted in order to arrive quicker here in Poland. Maybe you'll be asking yourself why did I stop reviewing Big Oat wheels for a while? There was several reasons actually. First of all, just a lot of models that were coming out and that were later not supported. Like we had a bunch of wheels before by Bigode MSP RS, uh, which um, didn't have uh, any parts available after a while. You know, this is already a while ago and uh, happily the newest wheels don't seem to catch on fire. However, the Bigode A2 did cut out on Marty and now he is recovering from a fall on this wheel, which was a Bigode wheel. And Chooch recently had a high speed cutout on this very wheel. So, um, of course, all manufacturers have issues, some bigger, some smaller. Uh, Bigode is not the only one that had uh, battery fires. Uh, until now, but after switching to the different cells, improving their software, it seems to be better or all right. When it comes to customer service and durability, well, that's something that we want to find out. Oh, and talking about this latest cutout by Chuch, in this video, I'm also going to explain to you uh, why I think that it's easier to cut off on Bigoda wheels than on veteran wheels. And that's it. These. And then more. And then even more. And then still up. And then after a while it'll cut off. Uh, just the way they, you know, create their software and how alarms work on this wheel. So make sure you stick around in this video, hit the like button if you 
appreciate this sort of content. With that said, oh, let's keep unboxing this. All right, so one thing I was complaining before about Bigode was plastic battery boxes. This is now metal. There is some foam here on the side. We have bigger connectors, XT90s instead of XT60s, although they were also using them before. Uh, so structural rigidity seems to be improved, although right after reviewing the Master Pro, uh, they also came out with many metal battery cases for other wheels. So yeah, the timing might, might have been a bit unfortunate, but I'm glad anyways that metal battery boxes that seem pretty sturdy are here. All right, then now for the wheel itself. By the way, I checked out a review by Ride One in Toronto. Uh, they, they made some really great content on, on this wheel, especially the part where they were unboxing it, talking about some faults, talking about pros and cons. So I suggest you checking out this video if you have a chance. Or for that matter, if you don't have a chance because uh, there's not many people named Chance around. Should I stop with the puns? Well, even if I should, I won't. <laughs> Anyways, right away, we are greeted with a spec sheet. So we have a 18 inch wheel, well, a 12 inch rim diameter, 2400 watt hours. So just like the Master, 13 uh, centimeters of suspension travel. So just like the S22, a lot more than the Master and other wheels they, they made previously. Uh, when it comes to the weight, is it anywhere here? 134 volts and free spin speed is somewhere around like 100, what, 10, 115 kilometers an hour. In general, this should be a high performance, I guess, off-road wheel uh, by Bigode. So I guess the, the specs, the specs seem just right for us. I, I just wonder, this wheel is a lot more expensive than the Master. The Master is for like 2,400 euro at my e-wheel and this is 800 euro more expensive. Uh, I'm curious what this wheel gives uh, compared to the master, what justifies the higher price or doesn't justify the higher price. We have a stock 5M charger in the box. It's pretty big, pretty lengthy, but not too heavy. As usual, I'm waiting for the day where we'll get such chargers. This is my charger from Ukraine from Surge. Well, I got it through Surge. 5 amps, 9 amps, 600 grams, what do you want to carry? Well, obviously. So I will want, I want for those expensive wheels to finally have small adjustable portable chargers instead of these bricks. But five amps is already better than three. And that is what we usually got from Bigode. I really do like the charging socket though, the GX20-4. This is a lot better than what, all of those 126 volt wheels with those, uh, what, six pin GX16 connectors. What else we got in the box? We have a pump. We really like those pumps because you can pump up both your tire and the shock with those. I got the air suspension version. I did want to get the spring, the coil. Uh, however, I would have to wait a longer time to get it. So uh, I guess, oh, fuses, interesting. That's probably for either the board or battery fuses. It's cool there in the box. But I said with the coil suspension, it seemed to be a bit too light for most riders and performance riding. It can get coils for these wheels much easier than for the Kingsong S22 because they have the different dimensions. But here it is in all of its glory, everything cold, a lot of metal, a lot of the body is metal. Let's get this thing out of the box. Uh. All right, so here it is pre-assembled except for the batteries and uh, EUC orange, I guess, because recently all new EUCs that come out are orange. V13, the new Adventure, the S19, etc. We have a glimpse up on the pads, which are enormous on this wheel. I'm gonna try riding on those pads at least for a while to see how they are. Yeah, I guess this is it. So what I'll do now is I'll um, assemble this wheel and then we'll talk uh, about my first impressions upon unboxing the wheel, because quite a bit of stuff has changed here compared to other uh, Bigode wheels. So yeah, I wanna talk about that.
So the wheel is finally assembled. It uh, took a while, uh, maybe a bit above an hour, and that's because uh, all of the um, batteries uh, weren't connected. I had to, you know, open it all up, put it all together. And this also gave me a glimpse about the inside of the wheel. Now, I will do a full uh, teardown of it, so I won't spoil too much about how this thing looks from the inside. We'll also see after a while of riding how it looks after riding. Uh, but from what, what I can tell from now, like it looks actually pretty solid. I'm quite impressed with the like qual quality of metals. All of the screws are big. Everything looks uh, pretty tightly uh, put together and also pretty well sealed. Like not only ha are the batteries sealed, they have their shrimp shrink wrap around them, but also the cables which go up to the motherboard. They have a very tight hole which you need to thread through. And compared to real life where you need to maybe do a bit of foreplay and lubricant here you need to get a little bit of lubricant and then just force your way through so uh, don't be in real life like you are with the bagode wheel i do like how it's assembled as said there's this uh, seed already on top a lot of stuff is included uh, so i'll get this thing off of the rack we will talk about what are my first impressions but before we do that I'll show you outside really quickly what is the difference between alarms on the good wheels and on Oh, well, it's here. On veteran wheels. All right, so the thing about Bigode and alarms is that, well, you can set up when it kicks in nowadays. You can set it at 70%, 80%, whatever you want. But there is just one tone of beep. And out of the factory, every Bigode wheel, I feel like has a different limit and they can't really cal calculate well where the cutoff point is, where are you really pushing too much. So when you are um, pushing a wheel which, uh, with a smaller battery, I feel like you will have less uh, time, less kilometers an hour, less acceleration before this cuts off than, for example, a Master Pro. So to demonstrate with the beeps, let's uh, start riding. I had to redo this one because I had uh, the speed alarm still on. Now, so now they're off, just the power alarm is on, and it's just one setting. It's either on or off uh, from factory at 80%. So let's see how it works. And that's it. It's just one level. Well, at 80% power draw from factory, and you're still accelerating, might be already too late. And with veteran wheels, even if you have the beep, it doesn't mean that right away they will cut off. They have just better set limits, better software uh, on their wheels. So once it starts beeping, you can still push through or it's, you, you have just enough time to react to, to react to back off. So you can see here that first I have those little bit of beeps. These. And then more, and then even more, and then still up, and then after a while it would cut off. So after those five, five beeps, I could still go 10 or 15 kilometers an hour more. So this gives me, gives me just plenty of time to react. So. I think with a veteran wheel, especially out of the box, it will be easier not to cut off, not to over lean it, than a Bagode wheel. So if you have one of those, especially with the smaller batteries, and uh, touch, go close to top speed, you, will be, you just need to be really ca careful to reach it slowly, because the cutoff point will be sooner on this than on this out of the box from factory. All right, so moment of truth. You probably saw it already running, but this will be my first time Put that back in right in a second. First time powering the Bigode Extreme on. Now the button is here on the bottom. So let's see what happens. Okay, other button. It's already balancing. It's rubbing somewhere. Is it the mud guard? Oh, it's uh, the vent, the air vent. But anyways. <laughs> 
Uh, this is the wheel. I guess it's uh, it's a, another option that you have if uh, you want to buy a Patton, a Extreme Bull Commander Mini. Yeah, it's supposed to be a mega off-road wheel. There are several things that I really like that Bigot does to their wheels. First of all, I'm a big fan of this type of suspension. Uh, maybe it'll be a bit less maintenance than the S22 and a bit tighter assembled than the... Oh wait, I need to get that off. <laughs> Uh, a bit tighter assembled than the veteran pattern and hopefully also a bit more durable. Definitely it's very tight right out of the box. I like that the pedals are honeycomb style and they have nice studs a lot better than on the pattern and they also have angle adjustment which is also great to have out of the factory. Seat is integrated, we have a massive display here in the front which is highly readable, shows you the temperature, speed, the whole odometer of the wheel. Now it's not as usable as on the pattern because you can set several settings on the screen. Here uh, you can only uh, do it via the app. And talking about the app, this is the first wheel by Bigode which is a, has a smart BMS. So I'm gonna try right away to, to connect it and see what we got here. Battery information. Okay, yeah, so I actually have the smart BMS here. Looks pretty similar to what we have on in motion wheels on the King Song. So we can sell, see all cell information here. So it's more of a monitoring BMS, but it's great to have because then you can see maybe which pack is broken or if there's any cell which has a different voltage. Really awesome and this gives me just a bit more certainty that this wheel is safer to use. A lot of other things that come into safety of a wheel but the, a smart BMS is definitely a standard and should be on all of our new wheels so that's great to have. Uh, when it comes to the trolley handle we have a similar design to the Master. I would still not lift the wheel by the trolley handle even though it ha does have the setting. Uh, but it's very well centered and very nice uh, to push around. And again, this display is just massive, so easy to see. And it has three digits, but uh, I wouldn't go to a three digit speed on this wheel, so I don't really need it so much. <laughs> there is a nice front handle, so this will be great for seated riding and also lifting up the wheel. A nice small detail about the lift switch is that you'd only need to press it in order to engage it, so it just and then you can lift the wheel, put it down, press again. Really awesome, very convenient. You can also lift it here by this assembly in the back, which is a light and a speaker. So we are going back with speakers on wheels, which is, well, for me, it's nice to hear. Not everyone likes speakers, but uh, I do. I do like to have the option. And there's also a kickstand in the back. Really awesome because it's not in a way if you're go going on jumps or steep uh, declines because it won't be in the way. If you want to put it on the kickstand, just look like this. And it's fairly, very stable. I like that the valve is right away here. You have your compression, I mean your rebound adjustment. So not too bad. I hope this one won't leak like prior big old uh, shocks uh, did. We have a nice front light as well. Uh, usual big old style. Not too blinding, and you can also adjust the height of it or the throw up and down. Uh, the beam is, I guess, centered. It doesn't have this cutoff point like the uh, like the Emotion V11 or V13, but at least it's not as blinding. It doesn't seem to be as blinding as the stock veteran light. So I prefer that actually to the blinding uh, veteran light. We'll have the mud guard in the back. I guess it'll be a bit too short when it comes to rainy weather riding and we have a mud guard here in the front. And again, those buttons, the charge port also is here on the bottom. I think it's better accessible than on the S22. You can see it here. I'm sure this thing will get filthy if you uh, plan on riding in rain because this mud guard is just a bit shorter. It doesn't extend in the front like it does on the pattern. Also not so much to the side. So I believe if you do off-roading on this wheel, this will get uh, pretty filthy. And here we have also the beeper which has a loudness adjustment, so I am a fan of that. So what, should we, should we check out the speaker? I'm pretty curious about the speaker. So it's not awesome quality, but it's there. So 
If you're just going somewhere and you guys are stopping over and you want to hear, uh, listen to some music, you can do it. I'm glad it's here. It's not, you know, a JBL um, small, I know, flip speaker or anything like that, but it's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's there. Oh, by the way, we have the pads here, but I think Bigot just forgot to ship me the screws for this pad because there's holes here where you can uh, align this pad, which is really awesome and uh, you can just fit it to your liking, but uh, I can't put it on now because I don't have a screw. So that's something you'll need to wait for when it comes to the first impressions ride on this wheel. I do like that there is uh, quite a bit of space here. I can just put my foot in, see how it is. Um, and um, one thing I was slightly concerned is like, get this getting into the tire. As you can see, it might be the case if I'm braking hard that it catches by the tire, but I don't know if this happens, if it'll be all screwed in, but that was just a slight concern of mine. Brake pad could be definitely higher. Uh, so, but, but I think it's still very usable. So I don't think it's a pad that I would just uh, take off immediately if I'd be just enjoying some, you know, city cruising. And you also have bumpers then, and it also has the front bumper here then. But uh, again, I don't have the screws here, so I can't really uh, put it onto the wheel right away. When it comes to charging, there's a single charge port now, and I totally don't mind that. Thing one is enough if it's a charge port like they use here. And uh, I'll really quickly also check what is the max amp amps I can uh, charge this wheel with. Uh, I'll just uh, grab my fast charger from Honing Ning real quick. So it's not fully charged, so it shouldn't be a problem to reach the max amps. So we have uh, 120 volts, we are charging at 5 amps, 8 amps, 9 amps, 10 amps. Are we charging? Let's go. The pattern is 15 amps, 11. Okay, 11 is too much. It stops charging at 11. So I guess uh, we can charge it with a charging speed of up to 10 amps. So about uh, two hours for a full charge. All right, so probably when you're looking at the extreme, you're also looking at the pattern. They're in a pr pretty similar price category, although the extreme is a slightly more uh, cheap. And when it comes to performance, well, I don't know yet because I uh, didn't try riding on the extreme yet, but uh, I'll just show you some first impressions compared to uh, the pattern. And out of the box, the Bego just comes with more accessories. The pedals are way better. Uh, the stock pads are also better. Well, I didn't have any pads on this. Uh, the seat is better. There is no seat in here. And also this here, this uh, rubber piece will be more comfortable against your leg. Well, maybe we'll see because there's also this. Well, we'll see. Uh, tail lights seem pretty similar or a bit better maybe on the pattern. Front lights, I, I prefer not blinding much with a bit weaker beam than super blinding. I have to change the light here on the pattern. Kickstand, pretty similar. Trolley handle, probably also pretty similar. Yeah, they do trade some blows. And the question is if you want to spend slightly less on this or you want to spend slightly more on this. Where the uh, Extreme excels, just as a first impressions, is the build quality, I think. Uh, just all of the CNC material here, all of the screws, I don't think I'll be destroying any threads here like I did a lot on. And in general, the tightness of the suspension, how everything is aligned just seems a bit more sturdy here. Just in general, the, the, the metals, the assembly, this looks surprisingly as a big old wheel, a bit more sturdy and well thought through and repairable compared to the pattern. The pattern has those, this, this body is just very, you know, the aluminum is just not uh, of the best quality. Now the question is how they will ride, how will the suspension behave, how will it uh, be in the long run. Oh, additionally, some things I wanted to mention about uh, the Bigode is that the app got really a lot more configurable now. So not only you can set up your PWM alarms on this wheel, I would suggest putting them a bit lower than factory, maybe 70%. You can also adjust if it will be pedal dipping or the pedals will go up in turns. So this is pretty great. And uh, I think that the, in general, the, the, the app at Bigo just got really, really configurable. And this has a smart BMS, this doesn't. And this also has temperature sensors, uh, as far as I'm aware, in the batteries, this too. 
Uh, this charge is a bit slower, although 15 amps is, uh, you won't get much battery life, I think, out of this wheel if you'll be constantly charging so fast. But hey, you have an option here. I also prefer the charge port placement here, uh, the bigger charge port. So there seem to be quite a lot of things going for, uh, for it. Uh, the cons, I would say, mudguard will be worse. It will get a lot more dirty from the inside. And of course, we will have to check for the Bigode quality. With that said, I think Bigode improved uh, a lot. Uh, well, we'll see when writing throughout uh, this half a year where I wasn't reviewing them. We got rid of the cold charge port. We have a smart BMS now. Now the question is if we will have also parts for this wheel coming forward. Because usually with Bigode, when you order a wheel and it's on your way, they already made a new one and you will either cancel, cancel your order or you'll be forever stuck with something that you're not satisfied with. So I think they're sort of a laboratory where they are doing just a lot of stuff and seeing sort of what sticks uh, and um, some of it won't, some of it will, and we never really know which one will. It's not even like the first batch is like, you know, not sure to get. It could be the second, the third, you, you never know. Uh, I just hope that uh, this sort of you know, assembly, this, these electronics, these batteries will be available in like two, three, four years. Because with, uh, with a Sherman, you're still pretty good. When it comes to parts, lots of people have them. You can trade them. I think you can still buy all parts, but uh, I'm not sure, uh, man. And with in motion, you can buy parts for pretty much any wheel uh, rolling back, like all of their wheels pretty much, um, except for the V3 Pro are still available, available. You can buy parts for them. Same goes for Kingsong. So this is another question. Water resistance, as I said, looks pretty good as well. I don't think there should be any issues. And uh, when it comes to more stuff, well, we'll have to see uh, into the future. But uh, if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.